two men who have never met each other before suddenly awaken to find themselves trapped in a small, brightly lit, empty room, with no windows and no doors. Neither of the two men have any recollection of how or why they wound up in this room. One of the men is white, slightly older and in his mid-forties. The other man is black and looks to be in his early twenties. They have clearly been kidnapped and placed in this room for a reason, but neither of them can figure out why. To make matters worse, the black man also has a raging erection. Inversely, the white man's penis is not erect. This could possibly be due to his age. Taking control of the situation, the black man, who is understandably shocked and confused, looks down at his erection, then back up to the white man and states the obvious. I be hard and you be soft. But what's happening, players? It's your favorite little thug in the hood. Ran with two nays, and today we be talking about Far Cry 5. But before we finna do that, we gots to give the microphone back to your boy Ren. And briefly talk about the history of Far Cry. By the way, Jimmy, thanks for doing that intro for me. That, I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, baby. Anyway, I've always been a big fan of the Far Cry series. The first game in 2004 was very interesting. It had you playing as a mutant that had special powers. It was pretty fun. Far Cry 2 was the polar opposite. You played as a man who had the worst immune system of all time, as he was always contracting diseases that you had to take care of, and his guns would consistently jam up in the middle of combat. But in all honesty, I didn't play that game enough to give it a fair chance. I do, however, plan on revisiting it relatively soon, but at least with Far Cry 2, they tried something new with it. It was something that was a little bit different from everything else at the time. Then Far Cry 3 came along and knocked it out of the park. It had really fun open-ended gameplay, an interesting story with a very compelling villain, and it was a total blast. It was one of my favorite games from 2012. Then Far Cry Blood Dragon was a fun little distraction, and then Far Cry 4 came out. Up until Far Cry 4, each of the games in this series had been drastically different from one another. You really never knew what you were going to get out of a Far Cry game. But Far Cry 4 was just more of the same. Pretty similar to 3, except it elaborated on some of the mechanics that made 3 so much fun. I still prefer 3 to 4, but 4 was still a good game. And that brings us to Far Cry 5, which is undoubtedly the worst game in the franchise. But, but hear me out. I don't want to hate this game. I don't want to hate any game for that matter. I don't actively play a game to seek out issues with it, despite what my commenters might say. These issues jump up and bite me in the crotch. All I want is to play good games. I wish I was like the Rad Brad, just this happy-go-lucky guy who just loves every game that gets shoved into his hot little hands, but that's just not me. And I strongly believe that the quality of video games won't improve if we just sit back and continue to praise mediocrity, which is exactly what's happening with Far Cry 5. I don't know about you, but I will not sit back and let the medium that I love fall to pieces without doing my damnedest to try and prevent it. So before you dislike this video, before you go on a big old rant down there in the comment section, just hear me out. Because I truly believe that I have your best interest in mind. Because the fact is, this game is a pretty big step down from the quality of every other game in the series. And for some reason, nobody's talking about it. But luckily, you got me here to do it for you. Let's start her up. Firstly, I was baffled to discover that this game only has three enemy types. You got your regular generic armed gunman, your regular generic armored gunman, and your melee type that blindly rushes at you in a straight line. All of which can be taken care of by simply shooting at them, or, you know, doing a takedown. And just to be generous, you could also count the animals as a fourth enemy type if you like. But all they do is rush at you in a straight line in an attempt to attack you. And sometimes they can't even handle that. So just to be clear, this massive open world 20 to 50 hour game only has four enemy types. Two of which are nearly identical to each other and none of them require you to change up your playstyle or challenge you in any way, regardless of difficulty. Nothing in this game does, because it's far too easy. The auto aim is pretty generous but even if it weren't, you don't even need to bother killing some of these enemies because sometimes they literally just keel over and die for you. I will admit though that the gunplay does feel pretty decent 
It helps that the guns sound really good. They're bassy and powerful, they're weighty, they've got a good kick to them, they make the enemies ragdoll real nice. But none of that matters when the enemies aren't satisfying to kill due to the generous auto-aim, the fact that I'm just killing the same four character models over and over again, and the fact that the AI is unbearably idiotic. I mean, look at this, boys. This is just simply inexcusable in today's day and age. We have all this technology, all this money thrown at this game, and the AI is this bad. And just to be clear, you, sp you spend a good amount of time shooting people in this game, and it never gets any more complicating than pointing your gun at the guy and shooting him. I mean, the enemies can't do nothing. Well, that ain't entirely true, I suppose. They can doggy paddle like nobody's business. Heck, they can just barely shoot up the broad side of this here building. These guys are about as smart as my brother Dale, and he stuck his pecker deep, deep inside Meemaw's stainless steel barbecue grill during the Indy 500, and now he's got grill marks on his Oscar Mayer like a patty from Burger King. He might be a redneck. So as a result of having poor AI, the stealth also just doesn't feel satisfying. When you can just saunter in and kill everybody, regardless of whether or not you're in their peripheral vision, it really doesn't feel all that satisfying. I know I'm supposed to feel like a badass predator here, marking bad guys and taking them out one by one, but they have an IQ of a toddler and are equally as easy to kill. And as if the enemy AI wasn't bad enough, your teammate's AI is even worse. And that's one of the new mechanics of this game, by the way, is that you can hire AI to tag along with you. Honestly, I don't understand why they implemented this into the game, because it serves no actual purpose to the gameplay. It only hurts it because the game is already easy enough. I don't need any additional help. I'm, do I'm doing fine by myself. But I guess it is nice though, since you can go make a sandwich and do the dishes as your bear and your cougar just kill everybody at the outpost for you and nab you that sweet, sweet undetected bonus. And trust me, you're gonna wanna use the bear or the cougar since the human companions can't seem to handle the simplest things. If you want them to kill somebody for you, it's gonna take you a good couple of minutes before they can get into position to shoot the guy you marked. And I can see you typing in the comments down there right now, saying something like, but Ren, if you hate the AI companions so much, then just don't use them. But here's the thing, you prepubescent little bitch. You actually need to use these teammates if you wanna properly level up your own character. So let me explain a little bit, let's backtrack. This game gives you little challenges that you need to complete to unlock upgrade points. Challenges like get 10 kills with an RPG, get 10 kills with a sniper rifle. You know, nothing that's actually genuinely challenging or incentivizes you to play the game in a slightly different way, of course. Just thoughtless base level challenges that for the most part you can complete on accident. But some of these challenges require your AI companions to earn a certain number of kills, which means that you have to wait around for your garbage teammates to eliminate 10 guys. So just to reiterate, in order to level up your character that you are in control of, you need to let somebody else kill the enemies for you. And that's just not my idea of fun. Besides, where is the logic in that? I don't come to video games so that an ally can do all of the work for me. I come to video games to escape, to get away to try and forget about that little boy I ran over last year. The little boy that's been haunting my nightmares ever since that fateful night where I lost control of the car for one second. I come to video games to have some fun, to be challenged, not sit back and watch a bear try to kill bearded white boys. If I wanted to see that, I'd watch The Revenant. But hey, I got to unlock that wingsuit, am I right? I mean, of course you want the wingsuit. It's a franchise staple. It's one of my personal favorite things in the series. In Far Cry 3, it was novel because I had never used a wingsuit in an FPS before. You could even use it to take down enemies, which was insanely badass when you pulled it off. Something you really can't do in Far Cry 5, by the way. But in Far Cry 4, the wingsuit was fun because they built the world with the wingsuit in mind by giving you cliff sides to, to soar next to and, and other dangerous environments to fly through. You always felt like you were near death at all times. One wrong move and you would become cliff meat. But vertically speaking, Far Cry 5 is basically nothing but an empty, open environment. There's really not much for you to zip between or fly through, and that takes a lot of the thrill out of using a wingsuit. 
making it purely just another mode of transport instead of a fun additional mechanic like it was in previous games. I mean, things start to get a little bit exciting when you start to get real low and get down near the trees, but by then you're so close to the ground that it's already time to pull your chute. Open world games need to have fun modes of transport because typically you spend about half your time in the game just traveling through the world. So if traversing the world isn't fun, that means half your game is really boring. With that being said though, I really do enjoy the driving in this game. Going in between trees in an ATV is pretty exciting, and when you pull off that perfect handbrake turn, that feels pretty satisfying. But driving around is the least efficient mode of vehicular transportation in this game. If you want to get around quickly, either use the wingsuit or just buy a helicopter. But the issue is, helicopters are really boring to pilot, and they can handle every problem that this game throws at you like it's nothing. Meaning that helicopters simplify an already oversimplified game beyond belief. In Far Cry 4 you had one tiny little chopper. It was a janky little thing that offered you absolutely no cover, it couldn't take much damage, and it didn't have any overpowered weapons on it that allowed you to lay waste to enemy vehicles with ease. It was a little gadget that was best used to get from point A to point B. But even then, the chopper would handle differently at certain altitudes, and if you went too high it would stall and start spinning around. So you were always kinda wrestling with it, and it felt really fun. It felt like I was controlling this five foot tall device that had no right to be up in the sky. It felt dangerous and it kept me engaged while I was in control of it. Whereas in Far Cry 5, flying a chopper is as simple as holding the left stick forward. And I'm mainly stuck to using helicopters, because this game gives you absolutely no incentive to explore the environment. There's no need to scrounge around for money, because the side quests give you plenty of it. And there's no need to search for good gear, because within 45 minutes of playtime, I found an LMG, the best gun in the game? Put a scope on it, put a silencer on it, and I never had any reason to remove it. It was an insanely powerful weapon, and thanks to the incredibly basic challenges, I was able to unlock every ability that I wanted to when I had about 25% of the main story completed. Which meant that I now had absolutely no reason to hunt the wildlife, since killing the animals only awards you with upgrade points. Unlike in previous games where you were heavily incentivized to hunt high level animals so that you could use their skin for specific upgrades, like a bigger wallet, the ability to carry more ammo, and things like that. And I really enjoyed that aspect of the other games. It was a nice change of pace to hunt the animals, and sometimes you had to use specific weapons to kill some of them, like bow and arrow only. You know, it was nice. But in Far Cry 5, they've just lumped it all into one oversimplified system, which if you ask me, is kind of a shame. <laughs> I also didn't want to explore the map because, while it does look pretty, I found its location of Montana to be insanely boring. Now this might be personal to me, but as somebody who lives in America, I never want to have anything to do with Montana. I'm sure the people there are nice, I'm sure you're great, but it just seems so boring and miserable. And it doesn't come close to the exotic area Far Cry 4 had, or the tropical islands of Far Cry 3. Places that are more visually appealing, and a genuine treat to be in. Not only that, but Far Cry 4 had a forest area, a snowy area, and a mountainous area. Different little locales that shook up the visuals a little bit. And that's par for the course in almost every open world game. You have to shake things up a little bit, otherwise every location just seems exactly the same. But Far Cry 5 doesn't even bother to do that. And while this game does look rather pleasing, you can sum up its entire visual aesthetic in just two words. Mountains and trees. And let me tell ya, it gets old fast. They literally didn't even try to make each area look distinct from one another. There's no differentiating from John's region, Faith's region, or Jacob's region, which is just lazy. You could have just put in a swampy area, throw some crocodiles in there, that'd be fine. The little boats with the big fan on the back from Waterboy could be there, that, that could be fun. Or maybe you could even have like a suburban neighborhood type area, but a lot of it had been destroyed from like a battle with the resistance against the Peggies or something like that. Something to really take advantage of the locale that they've chosen for this game? I think that could have been interesting. And it really doesn't feel like they put a lot of thought or effort into making the environment. And as a result, it just isn't fun to be in. And then there's the music, which doesn't do a whole lot to liven up the environment either. And this song right here... Genuinely makes me depressed. Every time you, you open up the map, that's what you hear, and it's miserable. So let's recap. We've got a boring map, 
combat that makes you want to nap, and teammates that complete the game while you fap. Let's add on to that very quickly, the fact that the Death From Above perk only works about half the time. It's supposed to automatically activate as you jump onto an enemy. You know, it worked perfectly fine in 3 and 4, but for whatever reason, it just doesn't work very often here. And I can't explain to you enough how much of a step down this game is from Far Cry 4, which had you riding on elephants and flipping trucks over, doing car-to-car -car takedowns, going from vehicle to wingsuit with just the press of a button, kicking barrels into enemies to blow them up, and Far Cry 5 doesn't have any of that. In terms of mechanics, it's a very bare-bones experience. This game has piss-poor missions. Every activity has you doing the standard fetch quest, or has you go into a certain area to eliminate all the bad guys in it. Like this mission right here, which takes place on a freaking movie set, and requires you to get rid of all the background noise by, you guessed it, killing all the bad guys that are making the noise. Wait, we're on a movie set, for Christ's sake. And, and that's all they can think of? Is go kill the guys? Why not do something that, you know, relates to being on a movie set? Like, allow us to operate the cables that one of the actors is attached to. You know, give us a little bit of control over the scene. Why not even throw us in as a stunt double? Give us a little quick time event. Or just something, anything, to break up the monotony of this game. I mean, I guess the next mission here changes up the gameplay a little bit. You gotta lure this cougar back to its home by throwing a piece of meat for it to run to once every 10 meters. Then when... Then after... Uh, oh god. Then when you finally get the cougar back to where it needs to be, there's a bunch of guys there you gotta kill, of course. So you kill them, effortless. Only to discover that the cougar has ran all the way back to where it was, and now I gotta lure it back again to the place I already lured it back to. I don't see how anybody could enjoy themselves during this quest. This is certainly not what I wanna be doing on my free time. Then there's another mission right here. This one literally feels like a tutorial. It just has you running through this area shooting stationary dummies. How is this engaging? I'm 15 hours into this game and you have me shooting fucking practice dummies. Then you got the clutch Nixon stunts which are pretty boring. They don't really do anything to shake up the gameplay and they also don't provide much of a challenge. You just drive. You have more than enough time to to finish them. And you spend a bulk of your time in this game doing these side missions. And most of them are mind-numbingly boring. There were a couple of missions that were okay, but none of them were actually good. And I didn't play every single side mission, I did about 75% of them. But even if the other 25% of the side missions are fantastic and amazing, the fact that 75% of them are an absolute drag is a huge flaw within itself. If you want an example of a game that has great side activities, I would highly recommend that you go play Just Cause 3. Its side quests change up gameplay quite a bit, they give you fun little objectives to complete, and they all give you genuinely worthwhile rewards. They aren't a chore to complete, and some of them even provide you with a bit of a challenge. Now I could excuse the poor side missions if the main missions weren't equally as boring. None of them even feel special. They all take you from this vast open world to a confined, scripted, very linear set of corridors that just makes you kill everybody in your way to progress. These are missions that offer no change to the gameplay. And one of them even forces you to repeat it three or four times. I mean, it has a purpose within the story, but having you run through the same exact obstacle course three times over is just lazy. They don't even bother to change any of it up. And speaking of lazy, there are very few actual required story missions that you need to complete because of the way this game works. So the way this game works is you get to one of three areas and complete tasks to fill up a meter. And once you fill up that meter to a certain point, the game just magically teleports you into a story mission. Regardless of whether or not you're in the middle of another side mission, or if you're minding your own business flying around in a helicopter, you get ripped away from whatever you're doing and are forced to watch a cutscene and complete a subpar mission. Unlike in the previous Far Cry games where, you know, the story was actually woven into the missions, where you interacted with the villains naturally, whether it was through actually going to that mission marker yourself, or having the villains surprise you. Far Cry 5 is a lot like Dan Schneider, in the sense that it forces you to do things you don't want to. And I think that the effort showcased here, in its mission design, is very emblematic of the effort that was put into the overall story.
The story here is depressingly average. It doesn't do anything surprising. You can tell everything that's gonna happen in this game just by looking at the back of the box. Besides, Far Cry's story is only as good as its villain, right? Because Far Cry 3's story wasn't really anything too spectacular, but its villain was excellent, psychotic, intimidating, and perfectly acted. Voss is so memorable and quotable. And I mean, even the main protagonist had a character arc to him. He went from a rich, snobby, pretentious kid to a ruthless, cold-blooded, godless killing machine who grew to truly enjoy taking lives. Which was a fascinating and very well done character arc that was perfectly suited for video games. Pagan Min was also really good in his own way. He wasn't psychotic like Voss was, but he was much more charismatic. He was always very entertaining to watch. More entertaining than intimidating, I felt. She knew me in a way that no one ever did. Mm. That takes me back. But they also took this story to interesting places by playing with the idea that Pagan Min is your father and things like that. But the villain they have in Far Cry 5 is just so boring. Despite all that you have done, you are not beyond salvation. It doesn't help that most of his cutscenes just have him getting very close to the camera just to stare at you for minutes on end while he talks in a monotone voice. It's honestly not much different than standing in front of a quest giver while they spout exposition at you. In the other games, the villains were always walking around the room, waving their arms around to emphasize what they're saying, chewing up the scenery, pouring gasoline on the floor, stabbing people. They were always doing things to make the cutscene engaging. They owned the room, and dominated every single scene they were in. Joseph Seed is a snoozer. And sure, he is very well acted. And at first, I will admit that his calm demeanor is kind of creepy. But it gets old real quick, since he only does that one thing, which is stare at you through his pedophile glasses like Kevin Spacey at a minor league baseball game. But even if Joseph were as emphatic as the other two villains, he still wouldn't be nearly as compelling, since he's just a rehashed trope that we've already seen a dozen times before. He's just another religious, nutjob, cult leader type, like in Outlast 2, Seven, The Mist, Red State, Dead Space, Faults, Sound of My Voice, Suspiria, Martyrs, and countless others, which all more or less did it better if you ask me. Joseph Seed doesn't have much character to him. He's rather one-dimensional. It almost feels like he was written by a completely different group of people who don't understand how to create a compelling Far Cry villain. And boy oh boy, wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what happened. And it shows. Let's not forget that previous games in the series allowed you to make choices throughout its story, which didn't really change things too drastically, but it got me more invested into what was going on due to the fact that I had a small portion of control over the story. But of course, in Far Cry 5, apart from just the very ending cutscene, those opportunities are practically non-existent. And with a story like this, in a setting like America, Ubisoft had a chance to do something really interesting with the story. Something memorable, politically or otherwise, but instead they just played it safe. And as a result, it's really boring. And unlike Far Cry 3 and 4, your character is now just a generic, silent protagonist. They made him a mute. So there's no interaction between you and the villain, which is really, quite frankly, something this game needs. There's no back and forth between you and the other characters, which again, something this game needs. You're just another Gordon Freeman. They didn't even bother giving you a character. They just slapped on this half-assed customization system that's about as deep as Destiny's and called it a day. And lastly, before we move on, there's the matter of that amazing and unforgettable ending that people are talking about. So I'm gonna spoil the ending of this game really quick here, not that it matters. But as long as you see this red box at the bottom corner of the screen, that means spoilers are happening. So either wait it out for 30 seconds or just skip ahead. But. Now that you've all been warned, I'm going to give you guys a solid piece of advice and ruin the twist to a few hundred movie and TV shows, okay? Whenever something you're watching has a crazy person in it that believes that something terrible is going to happen 99% of the time, that person is right. Same goes for when something you're watching is trying to make you think something like, hey, is, is that guy a double agent? Is he not? Maybe, maybe not. 99% of the time, that guy is a double agent. Because 99% of the time, it's a much more interesting plot point to explore. So at the very start of this game, my first thought was, there's a pretty good chance that this Joseph guy is right. Something bad is going to happen. And as a result, I wasn't surprised at all 
when something happened. So I didn't talk about the arcade mode, mostly because I don't think it has any staying power, the multiplayer is insanely laggy, and it's full of these user-created maps that have almost no thought or effort put into them. Some of them are alright, and I'm sure that one day, somebody's gonna figure something out and create something amazing, but I just don't think anybody's gonna be around to care or even to see it. But while I was playing arcade mode, I did run into the internet superstar B. Dobbins FTW, which was pretty cool. And then there's the co-op which forces you to stay within 100 meters of your teammate. And I would honestly rather play this game on my own terms, rather than being tethered to another human player slowing me down the entire time. And as harsh as I've been on this game, there were a few things that I really did enjoy about it, like the Fury Plant, which allows you to kill giant animals with a single swing of your bat, or kill bulls with your fist. But again, that's something that just simplifies the game even further, and it gets old after about 10 minutes. But there were little things here and there like that that livened me up a little bit. But moments like those were just so few and far between. So this game had a budget of a minimum of 80 million dollars, okay? So my question to you is, where did all that money go? What did they spend it on? Marketing? Let me know down in the comments. And my favorite comment will get a free Renz Reviews t-shirt. I mean, that money certainly didn't go towards polishing up this game because it is janky as all hell. I always felt like this game was actively fighting against me. I wanted to have fun with it, but it was constantly frustrating me as I tried to line up my sniper shot when the stupid bear walks right into my line of sight. It frustrated me as I landed my helicopter after successfully completing a mission only to have it blow up and kill me for literally no reason frustrated me as I tried to kill this pilot before he took off, only to have his helicopter explode for literally no reason. Frustrated me as I tried to shoot this helicopter with an RPG, only to have it blow up in my face for literally no reason. This whole game was just so unpolished and janky that I could not go five minutes without running into a bug. And that's not an exaggeration. But even if this game worked flawlessly, even if this game weren't riddled with jank, it still wouldn't be a very fun game, because it's just a rehash of Far Cry 3 and 4, which both did it better. And you know, if you haven't played those games and this is your first Far Cry, then you're probably going to enjoy this. It might feel new to you, and that's great, I wish I were you. But the fact is, Far Cry 5 doesn't bring anything new to the series. It doesn't elaborate on existing mechanics, it doesn't add any new ones. Unless you count fishing, which, why would you? It winds up taking mechanics away from the series. It just unceremoniously serves us up a plate of retread mediocrity. It's a game I've already played twice before, and doesn't even live up to the six-year-old version of itself that it's copying. Which is why I give this game a 4 out of 10. I'd be a lot more lenient on it if it tried to do something new or different, even if it failed. Because at its best, it's unengagingly average. At its worst, it's a frustrating mess. Yet, it's getting praise across the board. Eights and nines from everybody. People can't get enough of Far Cry 5 because the bar for AAA games has been set so miserably low thanks to messy launch after messy launch and a steady decline in quality over this past generation. People are seemingly willing to happily lap up mediocrity, and I don't get it. I'm sick of mediocrity being passed off as exceptional. I want to play better games, and you should too. Nothing is going to change if we don't speak up, if we don't critique. If we keep praising this garbage, nothing's going to improve. They're just gonna keep making garbage. So it's on us to let them know. Otherwise, video games are just gonna slowly start getting worse and worse, like they already have been over the past five years. So people, if you want video games to improve like I do, Tweet this video out to Ubisoft with the hashtag MeToo to let Ubisoft know that you all want what I want because something has got to change. But I gotta say, I'm about two hours in to Far Cry 5. It's fucking amazing. Uh, really the biggest major addition to Far Cry 5, in my opinion, uh, are the followers. These sidekicks add a lot of life to each task and help make the map feel like a real place. Having a dog with you that will bark when an angry enemy is around the corner is absolutely amazing. 
What we value most from our time traveling through Hope County are the individual encounters with clever quest givers. What the fuck? Where'd that come from? In terms of how smart the AI characters are, it's definitely better than you would expect. Aside from outposts, which are kind of repetitious, there's, there is no repetition, I feel like, in this game. It's all this, just a lot of really diverse stuff. I really struggle to think back on side missions and remember instances where they repeated stuff. It's just always so different. Far Cry 5 is stunning, fun, has a ton of content, and a lot of care has been put into every single aspect of this game. The writing and voice acting remain consistently strong across the board. If you need a pilot who can shoot the dick off a gopher from 50 feet in the air, I'm your gal. Someone call 911, I'm hit in the wiener. It's Ray Ray at the pumpkin farm. Boomer's going crazy. I don't know what to do. Far Cry 5 packs tons of details into its open world, cutting out the sense of copy and paste that other titles fall prey to. I can report that um, it runs beautifully on PS4 Pro, and I mean like beautifully. I never had a single issue. Everything feels polished and refined, and no matter what you're doing, everything feels appropriately hefty and gratifying. But seriously though, hammering home this point, like zero other bugs, like zero. I didn't get it with the last two entries in the series, but Far Cry 5 feels like the generational leap that fans have been waiting for. It is a strong contender not only for the best Far Cry game, but also one of Ubisoft's best games to date. Every part of Far Cry 5's system for progression and reward feel tuned to within an inch of perfection. Far Cry 5 is so close to being a perfect game that I am having such a difficult time saying if it's a 10 or a 9.5. You see a color screen there, bang. So this is my loop of death, and it's just gonna keep spawning me. Okay, this time now when it keeps looping, it's just going to black and white screens, not even going color, so bang. See, it's not even loading the screen, so obviously I'm just gonna constantly keep dying and dying. <laughs> what? What? Real. No, what? What? Um, I'm respawning in the sky. In an explosion. Can I drive? There we go. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. You would do that. You would do that, Dennis. You would absolutely do that. What the fuck? Holy shit. Holy shit. Let me get in the car. Holy fuck. Is this a mission-specific car that I can't drive? Why can he get in? What is happening?